Hello, welcome back to Scaffold Design for Scaffolders. I'm Alejandro Garcia and today I'm going to explain elasticity, plasticity and other engineering concepts uh, you must understand before the next videos. So, elasticity. We say a material is elastic if it recovers its original shape after removing a load. So, imagine we have a cantilever beam anchored to the wall and we apply a load at the end, obviously it's going to deform. But if the material is elastic, once we remove the load, it will recover its original shape. That's elastic. We also say that an elastic material is the one who follows Hooke's law. Robert Hooke discovered in 1660 that the formation of structure is proportional to the load applied. He explained it with the equation load equals a coefficient times the elongation, and he demonstrated this law with the springs. So he loaded many springs of different shapes and sizes with different loads, and he realized that if he doubled, the load, the elongation of the spring will also double. Okay, so elastic materials are also those that obey Hooke's law. And what about plasticity? Plastic material is the one that remains deformed after removing the load. So going back to the same example with a cantilever on the wall. We apply the load, it deforms, but now, after removing the load, it doesn't recover the original shape. The, the beam remains deformed. That's a plastic material. Now, you may be asking, are all materials plastic or elastic? Or, well, there are elastic materials, there are plastic materials, and there are also materials that behave elastically and plastically. For example, steel and aluminium. And we, we will explain later in what conditions. Another concept that uh, you must learn about is stress. Now, a stress on any point in a structure on a certain direction is the load you are applying over the area of application. That's a stress. That's the load over the area. And we are going to measure it in pascals. Pascal is a unit of pressure equal Newton over meter square. Let's do an example. Calculate the stress on a type 4 upright with 15 km leg load. And remember the equation, sigma or stress equals load over area. So, we want newtons over meter square. So, we have 15 km, that's going to be 15,000 newtons. And the area of a type 4 upright is uh, 5.57 centimeters squared. So to make it meter square, we are going to multiply by 10 to the minus 4 or divide by 10,000. It's exactly the same thing. And that's equal to a huge number. It's 26 million, nine to nine thousand, nine eighty-two point oh particles. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to work with such big numbers. So 
for scaffold design or structural engineering in general, we are going to work with megapascals. So we are going to divide by 1 million. So that's becoming 26.9 megapascals. Okay. And now another concept related with the stress. The strain. Strain is the elongation or shortening the material suffers under a load. So imagine we have this block with, with a tension load and the material elongates. We call it strain with, with an epsilon as the change in length over the original length and it has no units. Let me show you an example. Calculate the strain on a six meter upright that shortens three millimeters. So imagine we have a fully loaded scaffold and the leg load is causing the upright to become slightly shorter. And remember the equation of strain is the change in length over the original length. Since it has no, no units, so it's a dimensional, we want to have the same uh, units on top and bottom. So the shortening is three millimeters. And the original length is six meters. Since we have millimeters, Let's just multiply by a thousand. And that's equal to 0 0.0005. Or if you prefer, you can say this is 0 0.5 per thousand. Okay. Now, you may be wondering, okay, we have discussed about stress, we have discussed about the strain. So with the load, we find the stress, we know the strain, but is there any way to uh, relate the two? I mean, can we find from stress the strain or from strain the stress in a material or a structure? Yes, and that's the next concept we are discovering now. It's the Young's modulus. Young modulus or elastic modulus is a property of each material that indicates how easily it can stretch and deform. It's a measure of the stiffness of the material. And it's equal to stress over the strain. Now there are two values that you must learn. Those for steel and for aluminium. For steel is 210,000 megapascals. For aluminium, 70,000. Those are the two values you are going to use from now on over and over again. And how do you obtain the modulus of a material? The most common method is a tensile test. So you have a specimen made with the material and you're just going to put it on a test machine to stretch it. Okay, it's going to apply a tensile force until it breaks. And that's going to give us a stress strain curve. Stress strain curve is important because it provides three critical values the elastic modulus, the yield strength, and the ultimate strength. Let's have a look and see what they are. This is a typical curve for steel. 
So once we start testing the specimen intention, at the beginning, the material behaves elastically. So it follows Hooke's law. As you see here, we have a straight line because the stress is proportional to the strain. This is the slope of this line, or the rise of a run you see here, is the elastic modulus. Okay? Stress over a strain. And after a while we reach this flat line here. This is the yield strength or the elastic limit of the material. That's the maximum stress the material can take before becoming plastic. You are going to find this called SY or FY. On Eurocodes and also TE20, you will see FY. And for the standard uh, type 4 tubes, that's going to be 235 newtons per millimeter square because it's uh, steel 235. If you use a high strength steel, that's going to be 355 newtons per millimeter square. Now, now the material is be has become plastic, but the test continues. So now, obviously, the stress continues to increase. Also, the stain is, is increasing on this area until we reach the ultimate strength. That's the maximum capacity of the material. And again, you may find it as S over sigma sub u or F u. And this one, if you have a type 4 steel, is going to be 360. Or if you use an S355, the ultimate strength will be 510 newtons per millimeter square. But no need to remember those numbers now. Now, what happens after the ultimate strength? Material is breaking, so we have reached the maximum capacity. There is it will form a neck roughly at the center. And although the, the stress is decreasing, the strain continues to increase and increase and increase until it breaks apart and it fractures. So, that's it about the stress strain curve. You can test any material and you do it to obtain those three critical values. Yield strength, ultimate strength, and elastic modulus. And now that you understand where those values come from, let's do some examples. Now let's do a couple of examples with the stress and strain. Calculate the strain on a type 4 upright with 15 km leg load. Now, we have our equation. Stress equal young modulus times strain. We know uh, we know the leg load, so we can we can find stress, and we want to calculate the strain. So the strain equals stress over elastic modulus. So what's the stress? <clears throat> We're going to use megapascals. So, newtons over millimeter square. And also remember that stress equal load over area. So we have 
15,000 newtons and the area is 5.57 centimeter square that is equal to 557 millimeter square. Okay. And Young modulus of steel is 210,000 megapascals or 210,000 newton per millimeter square. So 210,000 And that's equal 0 0.00013 or 0 0.13. Let's do another one. Calculate stress on a 6 meter upright that shortens 3 millimeter. First, the equation. One of the most important equations in, in the structural engineering. Sigma equals elastic modulus times strain. We want a stress and we have the elastic modulus of a steel we already know and we have the dimensions to calculate the strain. Remember that strain is change in length over original length in the direction we are considering. In this case, we are considering along the axis of the upright. So, stress. Elastic modulus is 210 thousand megapascals or newton per millimeter square, same thing, times increases in length, in this case is reducing length three millimeters, so let's put it negative, and the original is six meters, so let's make it six thousand millimeters. And we are getting minus 105 megapascals. That's it. Just a couple of examples having the load of the formation along the, the axis of the of the upright. And now three exercises so you can practice at home. Number one, calculate stress on a 10 meter long HEB 200 beam that elongates two centimeters. Really, that's a steel beam. Number two, calculate strain on a type four steel upright with a stress of 36 megapascals. Also, what's the leg load? Number three, calculate the strain on an aluminium upright with a stress of 36 megapascals. Also, what's the leg load? Remember for two and three about Young's modulus. Aluminium has a lower elastic modulus. That means it's much easier to deform aluminium that is that it is for steel. And then obviously remember always the equation and those are the areas for the type for upright and for an aluminium upright. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please uh, click like below, leave me comments, any questions you may have so I can improve for future videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.